Hey guys, it's Miss Benson. Today we're going to talk about a really exciting topic called utility. Now utility is one of those key words in economics that means something specific. Remember at the beginning of the class you learned about the word marginal and how that means extra or additional? Well when you hear the word utility, I want you to think satisfaction. Well the primary goal of households and consumers in the circular flow model is to maximize their utility, is to get the most satisfaction that they can whenever they spend their hard earned money. So let me give you an example. I hope this describes something you've experienced. Have you ever bought something and when you reflect on that purchase, you really think, man, that's an awesome thing. I would totally buy it again. Well, if you are very satisfied with your purchase of something, then that means that you got a lot of utility out of that purchase. Now on the flip side, think about a time when you've ever bought something and it didn't measure up to your expectations. As soon as you got it home, it broke or it didn't work as it was supposed to or it didn't fit as you thought it would. When we spend our hard earned money on something and we don't get a lot of satisfaction out of it, then we feel a little upset or disappointed. So the primary goal of households is to maximize their utility, their satisfaction when they purchase goods or services. Now I know what you're thinking. Satisfaction is something that's really subjective. It's relative. It's something that's different from person to person. But even so, we're going to try to quantify or measure this satisfaction. So when we measure utility, we're going to measure it in the form of utils. Now let me give you an example that deals with pizza. Have you ever been so hungry, I'm talking pit of your stomach hunger, that you feel like you can't wait anymore to get something to eat? Well suppose you're out with your friends and you tell your friends, guys, we've got to stop and get something to eat right now. And so maybe y'all go to a pizza restaurant and you walk in the doors and you smell the aromas and it just smells delicious. So you get seated and you put in your order for pizza and you're sitting there waiting. Now, if you're sitting there waiting for your pizza, you haven't eaten anything yet. In fact, you're starving. So if you haven't consumed any slices of pizza yet, then you don't have any satisfaction. But then you see it. And so you make room on the table and they set the pizza down in front of you and your friends. And it is the best looking, most delicious pizza you've ever seen. Let's keep track of your satisfaction with a chart. So we're going to have three columns in this chart. First, we're going to have a column for the number of slices of pizza that you are going to eat in this example. So that's going to be our quantity column. Next, we're going to have a column for marginal utility. Marginal utility literally translated means extra satisfaction. This is the extra satisfaction that we are going to get when we consume another slice of pizza. So marginal utility is how much satisfaction you're getting from each individual slice. Then finally our third column is going to keep track of our total utility, our overall satisfaction from everything that we've consumed up to a certain point. So when we do total utility, we're just going to add together all of our marginal utilities. So back to the pizza. When you have that first slice of pizza, it is like magic. You get an extra 60 utils from that first slice of pizza. So your overall total satisfaction is 60. Now you're going to eat a second slice. When you eat the second slice, it's still pretty good. The pizza's still hot and you're still kind of hungry, but it's just not quite as magical as that first slice. So let's say it only gave you an additional 45 utils. Well, that's going to make your overall total be 105 utils from those two slices of pizza. Well, let's say you eat a third slice of pizza. That third slice of pizza is okay. Let's say you only get an additional 20 utils, and so now your grand total is 125 utils from three slices of pizza. You eat a fourth slice, the pizza's cooling down, you're getting fuller, so let's say that fourth slice only gives you an extra 10, so now your grand total is 135. And then finally that fifth slice only gives you an extra 3, so now your grand total is 138 noodles from 5 slices of pizza. Now after 5 slices of pizza, you're pretty full, but then you look at the table and there's one slice of pizza left. And your friends are saying, oh, just go ahead and eat it. We don't want to have to put it in a box. Then we got to keep up with it, carry the box around. It's going to make the car smell. So you give in to peer pressure and you eat that sixth slice of pizza, that last slice of pizza. And you know as soon as you did, it was a bad idea. Because as soon as you finish that slice, you get sick. 
Now that's a terrible experience. We would actually say that you have negative marginal utility there. So instead of adding positive satisfaction, that is a bad experience. That's gonna be negative utils right there. So let's say that that six slice gave you a negative 30 utils. So now your overall total utility is 108. So the question is, how many slices of pizza should you eat before you stop? Well, the overall goal is to maximize your total utility, so you want to eat all of the slices that give you positive satisfaction and stop before you get sick, stop before the negative utils, right? So in this example, you would want to go up to five slices of pizza. Now take a look at the chart that we drew. I want to point out some important relationships that are happening here. First, notice that as long as marginal utility is positive, then total utility is increasing. It really doesn't matter that marginal utility is going down from 60 to 45 to 20 to 10. As long as you are adding in a positive number to your total, your total is still going up. But whenever you add a negative number to your total, that makes your total utility fall. So when marginal utility is negative, your total utility decreases. Now if we were to put these things on a graph, it would look something like this. We're going to have our marginal utility graph on top and our total utility graph on the bottom and we're going to line them up. So think about our marginal utility curve. When we ate that first slice of pizza, we had a lot of satisfaction and then the second slice was 45 and then the third slice was 20 and then the fourth slice was 10 and 3 and then finally we crossed the x-axis and it went negative. So your marginal utility curve is high at first and then it goes down and eventually it can go negative. Now guys, what this is called is diminishing marginal utility and this explains common consumer behavior. Whenever something is new, people are excited and they really get a lot of satisfaction out of it, but after it's been out for a while, the extra satisfaction is less and less. Case in point, have you ever heard a song on the radio and the first couple times you heard it, you were like, oh yeah, that's a great song. And it kind of got catchy and you really like, you were happy every time that you heard it on the radio and you were like, that's my jam. Well, what about how you felt when you heard that song six months later after it had been overplayed? Maybe when you heard that song on the radio now, you're like, oh, this is that song again. And then you change it because you're tired of it. When consumers get tired of something, that describes diminishing marginal utility, decreasing extra satisfaction. Or this can happen with movies. Maybe the first time you see a movie, you think it's really cool. Even the second or third times, actually, you could think it's even better because you pick up on things that you didn't notice the first time. But eventually, after seeing that movie 80 or 150 times, maybe the 150th time isn't quite as satisfying as those first few times. As you consume more and more units of a good or service, the extra satisfaction that you get is less and less. Now let's draw our total utility curve. Remember, total utility is gonna go from zero to 60 to 105 to 125, 135 and 138, and then it's gonna fall down to 108 whenever marginal utility goes negative. So when we look at these curves, as long as marginal utility is positive, even if it's decreasing, as long as it's positive, that's still adding a positive amount to your total utility, that's still making your total increase. When your marginal is at zero, you're no longer adding any more satisfaction, so your total is at its highest, and the only place to go from there is negative. So when you add in a negative number, when your marginal utility goes negative, your total utility falls. Now there's another relationship we can have between these two. We can say that marginal is the slope of total. In other words, the numbers on the top graph describe the steepness of the hill in the bottom graph. So when these numbers in the top graph are big, the hill on the total graph is really, really steep. When these numbers get lower, the hill kind of flattens out. When marginal is at zero, well, zero slope means that it's flat at the top. And then when your numbers are negative, well, a negative slope means that you're going downhill. So marginal is always the slope of total. And also notice where they line up, marginal utility is zero 
when total utility is highest. So it's okay for your marginal to be zero because that means you've gotten all of the positive satisfaction that you can and you stop before the negative. So your total is maximized when your marginal is at zero. Now in our example, we really didn't talk about how much money you were spending. In reality, guys, we know money is a scarce resource, and so a lot of times we have to make choices with budget constraints. So let's talk about how you can maximize your utility even when you're on a budget. The trick is trying to get the most bang for your buck, trying to get the most utils per dollar. In our simplified examples, you're gonna be given a budget and you're gonna know how many utils each item gives you. And then you have to choose how many items you want to buy. Now you know that you've maximized your utility whenever the marginal utility per dollar of one item equals the marginal utility per dollar of another item. So that's your utility maximization rule. Let's work through an example to illustrate this. Suppose you have a $20 budget and you're trying to figure out how to maximize your total utility between coffee and cupcakes. Now we already have some information that's gonna help us out. In our chart, we have the quantity of items and we already know the extra satisfaction we would gain from consuming the next cup of coffee or consuming the next cupcake. And let's say that the price of coffee was $2 a cup and the price of cupcakes were $4 each. So we know the prices and we know the marginal utility. So how many cupcakes should we eat and how many cups of coffee should we get to maximize our total utility given our budget constraint? Well, let's work out how many utils we're getting per dollar. Let's work out how much satisfaction we're getting per dollar for each item. What we're gonna do is make a column for coffee and a column for cupcakes that shows the marginal utility per dollar, how many utils we get per dollar. So to do that, we need to take our marginal utility numbers and divide it by the price that we're paying for these items. So we're gonna take our marginal utility numbers for coffee and we're gonna divide them by the price of coffee, which is $2. And then we're gonna take our marginal utility numbers for cupcakes and we're gonna divide them by the price of cupcakes, which is $4. So now we have to start making some choices with our budget. We have a $20 budget. Now, you wanna maximize your utility with the money that you have, so your first choice should always be whatever gives you the most marginal utility per dollar. Now, in this case, we see that it's the first cupcake, because the first cupcake gives us seven and a half utils per dollar. So that's gonna be our first choice. So we'll go ahead and cross that off. Now, we spent $4 on that first cupcake, so now we only have $16 left in our budget. Let's see what we're gonna buy next. Notice that your second cupcake gives you six utils per dollar, and that's still more than your first cup of coffee. So your second choice is going to have another cupcake. So when you eat that second cupcake, well, there's another $4 that you've spent, so now your money's down to $12. For our third choice, notice how your marginal utility per dollar is the same for your first cup of coffee and for your third cupcake. So let's say you get a first cup of coffee, because probably after two cupcakes you're thirsty. You drink that first cup of coffee, which gives you five utils per dollar, and now you've got $10 left from your budget. And then you have that third cupcake, because it gives you the same amount of utils per dollar, and now you have $6 left of your budget. How are you gonna spend the rest of your money? Well, let's take a look and see how you can maximize your utility. With $6 left, notice how you get the same amount of utility per dollar for your second cup of coffee and for your fourth cupcake. So let's say you go ahead and have that second cup of coffee. All right, now your budget's down to $4, and with that last $4, you can get your fourth cupcake. Now you've spent all of your money, but you've gotten the most utility per dollar that you can. So the key to maximizing your utility whenever you're dealing with budget constraints is to always choose whatever is gonna give you the most utility per dollar. And notice at the end, the marginal utility that we got per dollar for coffee equaled the marginal utility we got per dollar for cupcakes. Now we'll do some more practice and examples with this later in class, but hopefully this helps you kind of understand utility and sort of get the gist of it. So until then guys, check you later.